you know, I'd argue that there's never been a time that's more important for us all to be digitally connected than right now. It's how we're all getting our information. And without the ability to access that information in real time, folks just aren't getting the information that they need to make good decisions for themselves and for others. And so, you know, we've had folks show up to community agencies here in St. John's last week who walked in, couldn't believe that nobody else was on the street and that there wasn't a lineup, had no idea about a pandemic or that things had been shut down. And we're just totally confused that the state of the world could change that quickly. And because it really did happen within a couple of days. And so if you were disconnected for those couple of days, it came as a really big shock to you. How are low income people digitally disconnected at all times? Yeah, so we all know the cost of connecting digitally can be really high. We see that in our cell phone bills and that our internet bills every single month. And for people that aren't able to afford that every month, that's one of the first things to go. And they move to sort of a pay to play model where they have, a, a you know, basically some minutes on their phone is the way we describe it, or a little bit of data that they can access each month. And then once that data is up or those minutes are used and they're digitally disconnected. Um, and so the cost of these devices is very, very high and the cost to access those services is very high all the time. How is this problem compounded by the closure of public internet access spaces like libraries or schools? You know, libraries and schools are huge. And so schools, obviously for the children that are, that are attending and libraries for all of us, but also there was an awful lot of restaurants and cafes that people use for this digital connection. And so you can, you know, just pop out in front of a Tim Hortons all, almost everywhere in Canada and get online for a few minutes if you need to and use their Wi-Fi connection. You can't do that in a lot of communities anymore. And if you're, you know, if you're milling around outside of Tim Hortons, I think you're going to be ushered away pretty quick these days because we're just not allowed to gather the way we used to. And so it's a real issue. We're seeing a lot of folks, you know, even within the sheltering community, you know, so transition houses and shelters, we, you know, we just don't have the bandwidth for everybody to be on all the time. We don't have individual phones and rooms for people to connect to folks. It's a huge issue in the shelter and homelessness community. What's the quality of life difference for a person who's on the wrong side of this digital disconnect? Yeah, it makes a huge difference. When we think about quality of life, right, it can be really easy to trivialize that and think, you know, hey, if someone doesn't have Netflix, well, it's not the end of the world. But right now, when we're talking about days and weeks and potentially months of social isolation, if folks don't have something to do, you know, some of those mental health and addictions pieces get harder and harder to deal with. And it also, when we think about enforcement on the state of emergency, right, we really need people to stay home. The more things people have got to do to occupy themselves and their minds and to stay connected at home, the easier it's going to be for them to do that and the quicker we're going to be able to get past this thing. What can we do both as individuals and especially for those of us um, charged with you know, disseminating vital information? How can we make sure these people aren't getting left out? You know, I think making sure that the radio coverage is great. Most people, even if you don't have a great digital connection to the world, you've still got a radio that you can turn on. And so I'd encourage people to do that. And I'd encourage the CBC, you know, to keep the great radio broadcast going. Um, that's important. But the second thing is when we think about this problem, we need to think about universality and affordability. The more digital connection becomes necessary in our lives, the more the onus is on governments to make sure that that connection is provided to individuals in a way that they can afford and access reasonably. We haven't seen that. It hasn't been a priority for governments. It needs to be the more we start to think about this, how we make sure people can shelter in place safely with the right access to services is going to be a thing we all need to deal with.